heard from um, the funding agency from Thailand and for the Philippines, next we will meet uh, the renowned expert in the field of wedding and interface science, Professor Sujatami Tra from Canada. Um, he is the DFC director of the Water Group Institute for Nanotechnology, Canada's largest nanotechnology institute. A full professor in the Department of Mechanical and Mechatronics Engineering. Plus, appointed as a professor of chemical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, physics and astronomy, and, chemi and chemistry at the University of Waterloo. And not only the executive director and professor, he is also an entrepreneur mind, being a founder and CEO of Canadian startup named Apophis Incorporated, focused on quantum computing and a Dutch startup named SW Enterprise BB, uh, focused on ultra-fast encapsulation technology supported by the University of Waterloo. So let's hear more from him on magic and interfaces. So, first of all, please. So much uh, for this time invitation. I think I'm, oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think I have, uh, say, 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, so, um, uh, try to give a couple of examples. My actual presentation is fairly long, so I will skip most of it. I will give you some of the key, just particularly how we have been uh, able to uh, translate technology into startup space as well. So, uh, interface uh, plays a big role in uh, nanoscience material discovery because that's where all the magic happens be it uh, you know. Uh, your bottom where you have the water and the air interface, so everything at the interface molecule attracts and things quite interesting happen. So we try to look at uh, this, uh, uh, the first application is on encapsulation. So in encapsulation what you have is a core which is an active ingredient which you like to protect with a shell layer. And this has a wide application be pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, food flavorant, you know, cosmetic, uh, now all these collagens and all these uh, free uh, capsules that was uh, encapsulation as well as inject printing. So this work was uh, done by my PhD students just finishing, the Shishendu. And we, why we looked at a new encapsulation is because uh, current techniques are very restrictive in terms of core shell. These are very energy intensive because you have to, you know, do tumble drying. It is, uh, if you look at the large industrial industry scale pharmaceutical processes, uh, this is hugely energy intensive, uh, requires complex infrastructures and often they are uh, very slow. So what we did is uh, we said, well, let's uh, look at a very novel way of encapsulation, what we call it as a liquid-liquid encapsulation. So with liquid-liquid we mean is that we bring the core, which is uh, the core API which you want to pack through a dispensing nozzle and then is an interfacial layer which is coating in a host bath. This is where the shell layer is. So the complex interaction of the interfacial energy allows to wrap the core with a stable encapsulation. So the video shows here, hopefully it plays, yeah. Uh, so you can see that as it, the drop gets through the journey and we can actually dye it and you can see that the completely shell layer is protected uh, and it protects the API. And it's quite um, interesting because when you are working with the liquid liquid system, you are able to tune the shell thickness. So around 500 nanometer to 2 millimeter, it's ultra fast. It's a 50 millisecond per encapsulation. So that's a very interesting and very um, high throughput system. And then you can actually have multiple of them and you can extract these carbons as well. The, I will not go into details of this, the behind of this is essentially the thermodynamics dictated. So that's why it's a very stable interfacial process because the gives free energy of that encapsulation process is the most favorable, thermodynamically favorable state. If you have unwrapped this, is the most un thermodynamically unfavorable state. So that's why we get the most stable encapsulation. Not only the, uh, well, we looked at the various characterization, for example, whether this is really uh, uh, stable encapsulation because we are encapsulating with the canola oil and we do a wetting signature of the alone on the surface with the canola oil versus the encapsulated drop, we see the same signature. So we again ascertain that there is a stable encapsulation takes place. 
So encapsulation alone, the thermodynamics is one part of the story, but again, thermodynamics alone cannot create a successful encapsulation because it also needs energy for penetration because you are dealing with a viscous medium, so there is a viscous dissipation and uh, it needs a kinetic energy, so it, in other words, it needs a height of impact. So a height of impact is often determined through something called the impact Weber number. So if I draw plot an impact Weber number with respect to the thickness of the shell layer, so you can imagine if I have a less, uh, you know, uh, kind of height, I need less amount of shell layer. Whereas I increase uh, the higher and higher shell thickness, I need more and more height to be able to still encapsulation. It also does uh, completely protect the cargo against corrosive environment. For example, ethylene glycol, as we know, is completely miscible in water. But uh, when we put this kind of interfacial layer, you'll see that uh, it can be able to wrap the ethylene glycol completely into a water bath, and ethylene glycol doesn't dissolve in this case. So it's again a proof that this kind of technology is able to encapsulate valuable cargoes and you don't need to worry about you know, corrosive environment present there so. Well, uh, we looked at uh, how we can uh, use this kind of technique apart from the traditional ways that we knew in terms of pharmaceutical products. Uh, so we, uh, we are looking at something called experience driven drink. So nowadays you can get something like um, you know, in Pepsi, you want to have a flavor uh, which will last long. Say, for example, a honey, honey in, uh, in these kind of honey pearls. So, based on your, because the thickness of the shell layer can vary. So, based on your pressure of the tongue or by your bite of the teeth, you can actually release the active ingredients. So of course, being Canadian, we have to bring maple syrup into the picture. So, also we put a maple syrup, and we can see this kind of interesting things happen and uh, it's quite fascinating. So with this, what we did is uh, uh, we went to Eindhoven. This is the birthplace of Philips. Uh, and Europe, as you know, is uh, very much in terms of environmental aspects. So our technology being a liquid liquid system doesn't require any introduction of microplastics. So it becomes a quite attractive technology. That's where we set up this uh, uh, enterprise, which is called Scalable Liquid Encapsulation Italy Enterprise. Uh, the MVP you can see is uh, we can do a high throughput. This uh, entire machine can go up to 160,000 encapsulations per hour. Uh, it's a pretty high throughput, and uh, uh, we are looking at food beverages, nutraceuticals, and so forth. And uh, the, the advantage what we have at the University of Waterloo is inventor of intellectual property. So, whatever I do in my lab, my, myself, my students, everything belongs to me, not to the university. So, that's where. Uh, we are able to be this kind of exciting startup. Uh, this is a venture in partnership with Hydric Excel in the Brainport region. Next, uh, we looked at uh, whether we can further functionalize this. So, in other words, uh, can we achieve something called targeted drug delivery and so forth, where you can move the cargo at your will? So, this is the work also done with my postdoc, Utsap. Uh, and uh, here we use magnetic nanoparticles, uh, with, uh, which is in, uh, suspended in an organic fluid, uh, which is maybe a oil based or water based, um, uh, you know, uh, carrier fluid. And now the shell, uh, you can have magnetically actuated system. So the premise is uh, pretty much the same. Now instead of a, a typical liquid, you have a PDMS, which is a viscoelastic material. So it has a different uh, properties, elasticity based on the thickness, you can vary the uh, viscoelastic property of it. And then you have a ferro fluid uh, now as a core, which is you, it gets protected by the PDMS layer and you actuate it by the magnet. So in this case, you have additional, apart from surface tension forces, which are at the interface, you have a magnetic force, which is able to pull the plug inside the a host back and that uh, you, we do a lot of analysis in terms of what is the map, what is the optimal size of the plug and so forth. Nevertheless, the key fact here is also the magnetic energy or in other words the magnetic field on one number in this case plays a role because uh, in some cases you can get uh, encapsulation, stable one and so forth 
perhaps this video will give you an idea. We are getting a stable encapsulation. This is uh, completely with the PDMS, but you also some cases you will get unstable encapsulation based on what bond number. In other words, what is the magnetic force that you apply to the plug. So there are these kind of, have to be carefully studied. One has to do a regime map to really understand what is the operating parameter. So this T star is where the thickness of the PDMS layer sits in because now not only you have to deal with the visco viscous dissipation of the host band, but you also have a viscoelasticity of the PDMS that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, it's very interesting technology we developed because if you look at these are individual four different uh, ferrofluid plugs, but they are individually wrapped now and then covered by entire by PDMS. So if this was not have a stable encapsulation, very thin nanometer level, then everything would have mounted because you drop polis very readily. So that's the drop polis is the, the governing physics that happens. But in this case, you can see completely separate encapsulated product. And my students were having fun with this kind of thing where they were able to move this at different wills that, uh, so you can actually create targeted uh, location and then release the hardware as well. So these are very interesting things uh, uh, that happens. Uh, so uh, I will, there are other aspects of these uh, things in terms of droplet. I will not, I uh, will take a few minutes. So. Other aspects we look at is uh, when you have these kind of drops sitting on a you know on a host bar and so forth. The key aspect is the measure of the adhesion energy. So this is very critical really because as a, uh, a material scientist, you often are worried about uh, what is the what is the adhesion energy, work of adhesion of these kind of system, and uh, this is uh, often done. Uh, uh, historically through a contact angle measurement, so where you can make uh, contact angle hysteresis measurement, uh, advancing and receding contact angle, and through there you can measure the work of adhesion. But these are all indirect measurement. So we look at a very fundamental way, which is a cantilever based uh, mechanism. This is the work done by my PhD student Sishantu along with uh, Sadiq, the postdoc, where we take a cantilever and uh, we put a probe drop, which you uh, we want to measure the adhesion of this uh, liquid with respect to the solid substrate. So the substrate is brought in contact, it gets, uh, there is a contact of this, then the retraction of takes place, so then the cantilever bound. So then the reflection of the cantilever by a, you know, typical high school physics, you can force this uh, spring constant times the displacement, you can measure the adhesion force in this kind of system. Uh, why this was interesting is because we, uh, during the COVID time, uh, uh, this work we were doing, Kiran was doing a postdoc with me, he's now a professor at IIT, he, he was doing um, work on trying to understand how, uh, say, uh, bacteria and so forth uh, adhere to the surfaces. So when we look at interfacial science literature, often you will see that microparticles, because bacteria then scales are one micron. So often people mimic that with microparticles, and this is what we see when you have microparticle with increase in concentration, the contact angle increases, and the uh, uh, adhesion force also increases with the microparticle suspension. However, when you do with uh, bacteria, in this case, in our group, we have at, uh, we have a very extensive, uh, I would say, experience with E. coli. We grow live and uh, live E. coli bacteria. We do like particular E. coli. We do. Uh, in LTD bra, and what we realize is that in case of an E. coli, with the increase of the concentration of the E. coli, actually adhesion force decreases. So, microparticle and dead bacteria behave differently. For many of living organisms, it is very different. So, uh, actually, that's where the interesting but biology and wetting, you know, these sciences emerge and uh, is non trivial. And we provide some justifications on why these things, uh, why. Uh, like bacteria, when you have to do with interfacial science, you have to be very careful about these things so in terms of doing with the live system because they create colony form units and the flagellas and all these are very complex uh, biomechanics takes place in these kind of systems. We are looking also on the face max. Similarly, we were able to quantify actually adhesion 
of, for example, bacteria on the face mask, but more interestingly, these kind of virus. So in our group also, we were able to uh, have a cell line established so using human lung epithelial cell in my lab itself, which is BSL2. So we can bring human coronavirus 229E, which is a, a mimic of a surrogate of a real SARS-CoV-2. And then uh, we uh, do uh, uh, cytopathy of the cell, and then we look at the addition measurement of these kind of using the cantilever probe that I showed here, and we can actually measure how a how a viral load now will get attached to a mask-like material. So these are kind of very interesting in the facial work one can do. And further, we were able to establish not only for uh, you know normally these kind of addition work can be done for uh, um, what we call. Uh, oleophobic or hydrophobic surfaces, but we were able to extend this kind of work for any surfaces. And this was fundamentally using image analysis and we were able to find out actual deepening point and through that we were able to make, measure the addition force. I will, in the interest of time, I will skip this. The last part I will talk about the wetting of 2D material. This is very interesting because there is a lot of controversy about how wetting, and if you have a 2D material like graphene on a glass and things like that, or whether the liquid sees the graphene or sees the underlying substrate is a real interesting. For this, we do a lot of empty simulations, uh, particularly, for example, hexagonal boron nitride is uh, similar to graphene, but it has a different kind of a uh, molecular structure. And we do, like, for example, this kind of uh, tunable variability. These are interesting where you can actually uh, manage the wettabilities of uh, these uh, nanostructures because this has a zigzag versus a armchair configuration because of its chemical signature and you can actually manage the wettability what we call is a, a something called a Wenzel to Cassie Baxter transition. So these are very important in terms of material science because uh, whether it is a fully wetted versus a partially wetted to completely phobic these kind of structures uh, you can actually Manipulate uh, by uh, by these kind of chemical signatures. Um, also, what we did is uh, we tried to understand uh, in a very extreme confinement uh, uh, how water transport takes place. So this is inside the graphene, uh, and we can actually enhance water transport inside the graphene, and that led to this very interesting uh, startup, uh, which is Aquapex, is a Canadian startup. What we do here is uh, we mimic nature. So everybody in us, we have something called aquaporins. So these aquaporins are membrane proteins, uh, which actually allows water to flow through, but then actually rejects the salt. So we take that kind of construct and create extreme confinement for water molecules. So these are water molecules, but uh, if you look at the condensed phase of water molecule, water is in the tetrahedral motif. But when you have this kind of extreme confinement, then no longer in the tetrahedral motif. So the hydrogen bond relaxes and then they form a linear file molecule. And in between, we can actually trap ion. These are cesium and sodium ions. So these are meant for what we call the strap ion system. So this is again a very interesting uh, journey we have in our terms of our uh, work. Of course, uh, this is I'm presenting the work, but it's all the work is really done by my graduate students, postdocs, masters, PhD students, and I enjoy them. I learn from them a lot because they play quite exciting in my group. My and this is a very diverse group as well. And um, we would love to have any of the, the students looking for opportunities. Uh, we are always, I am always hiding in my group, uh, bright mind. So thank you for this opportunity, and uh, love to take any questions, comments. Thank you very much. Presentations, so like any questions from the floor? Okay, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So, Eric Yadav, he do on encapsulation technology yeah, and on the like, grading of 2D materials. So, he has two startups in both Canada and Netherlands. Right?